Hey, I'm Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to use Angular and D3 to make one of these little simulators with a bunch of cars driving around a circle. It's like a starting point for building a more complicated one. This is the project. On the right, we've got our index.html file. On the left, we've got CoffeeScript. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is set up the Angular app, register everything. We're going to call it main app, I'm building a div that I'm registering the app on. And the next thing to do is make this little directive that is actually going to inject the template. I'm going to call it road dir or road directive. Uh, now it's time just to do a bunch of Angular boilerplate. This is the road dir function. I isolate the scope. I'm going to use the controller as syntax so that in the template we'll be able to reference our data model as VM for view model. Uh, and then template will be a template string. Uh, so the template is really just basically an SVG and we're going to put SVG elements inside of it. The SVG is going to have a width and height of 500, it's just a big square. And then we need to make a group to hold everything together and move all of our elements together. I'm going to call that G main. And then in the middle of the group, I'm going to put a circle. Uh, give it the class road to style it. It's going to be, you know, this big circular road. One thing I need to do is move the circle into the middle of the pane rather than being in the top left like it's defaulted to. So to do that, I'm going to use a transform, translate, and then I need to move it halfway from the top and the left. Oh, I'm also going to give it, oh uh, yeah, actually half of 500 is 250, not 225. So, But I do want to make the radius only 225, so there's kind of like a buffer. And here is the styling for the road itself. And I'm using this um, material color less file that has variables for all of the material design colors. So that's like, it makes it pretty easy to style. And here's this guy that made it. Okay, so now the road is styled and we should be able to inject the template. Yep, there it is. The next step is going to be actually to build out our data model, which I'll do. I need to make the controller. I'm going to use like, uh, I'm going to instantiate that as like a class and I need to inject it into the directive and inject the scope service into the controller. That's done. So now the, the data that we need is like this big array that I'm going to call cars. Uh, I'm going to have 20 cars. So I just use this lodash function, create numbers from zero to 20. I'm going to map over them. And for each of those numbers, I need to make well, first you need to set a location for the car. I mean, I'll let them be like evenly spread around the circle to start out with. Uh, to do that, they're all gonna have locations that are numbers between zero and 360. So now I'm actually gonna build out this car class that will have data and methods for the cars. Uh, the cars start out with a location, that's all that they need. And then I also am gonna give every car like a unique ID using the slowdash unique ID function tell them apart. Um, and then I'm also going to give the cars uh, a velocity and it'll be like in degrees per second basically. So say they go about 15 degrees around the circle per second. Now that we have everything set up with the data, we're actually going to start putting the cars into the SVG. We're going to put them on this class called gcars to keep track of them. Then we need to make a group for each individual car, call that gcar. And we're going to loop over the cars array using ng repeat. We're going to do this track by car.id to keep track of them. Then eat the car itself that you see will be this rec to the class car. Uh, I'm going to make it like 20 by 20 for right now. Nothing too fancy. And one thing is that all these cars are located in the middle of the screen, so they actually need to be moved outwards. So we need to move them out by the amount of the radius of the circle. 225. Next step obviously is to style the car. The next step is actually to rotate the cars appropriately around the center. So to do that we're going to do this uh, ng adder transform uh, and rotate it with the rotation attribute of transform by the amount of the car's location. So we do car.loc inside the do double curly brackets because it's dynamic. And now if we reload, yep, there they are. But look, they, the squares don't look good and they're too far out. So we need to move them a little bit inwards, uh, make the height up there. Maybe instead of X, we're going to use Y. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, those look like regular cars. So, but they're still a little bit too far out. So I'm going to move them in to like 220. 
Yeah, right in the middle of the circle. Now it's time to actually put the buttons in so that you can click on something and something will happen. Right now we're just going to test it out. Do ng click, vm dot click. Uh, so we need to add a click method onto our contr controller. Uh, I'm just going to make it say hello for right now. Uh, where's the button? Huh? Oh, there it is. Really little. I didn't put any text, so I'll say play pause because that's what's going to do later on. Yep, there it is. Console logs hello. Now we need to actually make this click function do something. So we're going to do it's going to be play pause. So if things are paused, then play. Otherwise, we'll say pause. The pause function itself is simple. It just is going to set a paused value to true. The play button is more complicated. So first we want to pause in case uh, it's already playing. And then we need to set pause false because it's playing now. And here is where the real action is, which is we're going to use this d3.timer function, which is just like set interval, it just runs the function over and over, but it passes an elapsed number, the amount of time that's elapsed in milliseconds since the first time it was called. Each time we're going to loop over the cars and we're going to pass each car to a move method. We're going to pass uh, the amount of time that's passed since the last time the D3 timer function was called. So we need to have this last number to keep track. Set last to elapsed at the end of the function firing. Um, and then the timer method returns uh, true or false. Uh, if it returns true, then it pauses it. It, it exits. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, oh yeah, and don't forget to uh, render your DOM again with this scope eval async. Um, and then we're going to use this D3 timer flush. That just means that it executes in case somebody presses, keeps pressing the button. So now we have everything that we need um, except for the move method on the car. So the move method is going to take DT, the amount of time since the la last time it was called, and uh, it needs to update the location using that. So let's say the location increases by DT over 1,000, converting to seconds. Um, times its velocity. And that should be everything that we need. Let's see if it actually works. It does. All right, thanks for bearing with me. And I hope that you stay tuned for more videos about how to build more complex simulations. Hi, Steve. It will make it responsive. This is the final audio. What? <laughs> this is fucking oh yeah, there's like these... <laughs> And then I am now fighting off a massive crow, so you'll have to keep with me as I kick these birds and swing. I'm holding a scimitar. Um, one of the th problems is that I sold my soul to the devil, um, and now he's come to collect. Unfortunately, I did it when I was only eight years old, and so all I got was twice as much Halloween candy as normal. Um, probably not a good deal. Feel a little bit ripped off.